The Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. God, this is the Word of Faith broadcast, and this is Dr. Bill Bailey. I'm glad you could join us once again. We're going to be getting into the Word of God this week on something that is very familiar, uh, something that we've taught on actually before, uh, but it's something we need to hear once again. So we're going to be getting into that in just a few minutes. Uh, before I do, though, I'd like to remind you about Word of Faith Radio, WFR.org. I'll put it up here on the screen. I tell you what, they have some of the best, well, they have the best Word of Faith programming of any station you're going to find, whether it is terrestrial or whether it is over the internet. And that's what this is, internet radio, streamed right to your device. Now, the big news that I have for you is that if you have an Android device, whether it's an Android tablet or an Android phone or, you know, anything that's running the Android operating system that you have access to the Android market. The Android market, as you know, is where you go find applications, apps as they call them, for your handheld device. And uh, you go to the Android market, now get this, type in W-O-F-R dot O-R-G, okay? Lowercase, just like that. I'll put it right here on the screen, just like you should type it. W-O-F-R dot O-R-G, click search, and you will find, are you ready? The Word of Faith radio app. We have our own app now for Android devices, and it is so simple, you download it, you let it install, and then you just click play. And it will play immediately, Word of Faith radio. Now that's exciting, that is big, big news, because having our own app means that we have everything built into it that we wanted. Uh, you can use it as an alarm clock, believe it or not. Uh, you can tell friends about it through Twitter or Facebook. You can go to our website by clicking on that. Uh, you go to About first and then go to the website. Uh, just a lot of different features that, that make it really nice, but the main thing is you click play and you can hear Word of Faith Radio. And I recently had the opportunity to drive from my home here in High Point, North Carolina, all the way up to Hickory, which is almost a two hour drive. And the entire way I was able to listen to Word of Faith Radio over this app on my Android phone, which is a Droid X phone uh, through Verizon. And I listened to it and had no hiccups or problems. It was really, really nice. Occasionally when you go down, you know, a hill and get down into a low area, uh, it would briefly kind of buffer and come right back, but it, you, di you didn't lose anything. The person that was teaching, it just had a little pause and then it picked right up uh, because it buffered it. So it really is nice how it, even when it runs into a situation like that, you don't lose anything. It's really cool that it does that. So I'd encourage you to check that out. It is 100% free. It's a free app that you can download off the Android market. So check that out. And remember, it works on tablets too, Android type tablets. If you have access to the Android market, you can go type in wfr.org in the search and you'll find that app and you can download it. And go ahead and favorite it and tweet it and tell people about it because the more people we get using that application, the more popular it becomes, the higher in the rankings it is, and then that will help us get the information and the word out about Word of Faith Radio. So that's a good thing. And you can just tweet about it and Facebook it and everything else. That'll be great. So we'd appreciate that. All right. All right. Well, let's get into the Word of God. Let's, I've got my actual physical Bible here. What do you know? <laughs> Instead of an um, electronic computerized one, which, by the way, if you're looking for an electronic Bible, I still highly recommend eSword, e-sword.net. I'll put that right here. And I encourage you to check that out. But sometimes you just got to go back to the feel of leather and paper. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Let's go to Mark chapter 4. 
We're going to start in verse 1 here. And I know, as I said, this is familiar scripture, but it's scripture that is powerful and has a lot to say to us in this time. Very, oh, We're going to get some good stuff. I, I can just tell you that. All right, verse 1, And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there were, was scattered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. Now, in other words... There was such a big crowd that he had to, he was kept getting pressed up against the edge of the water. So he just got in a boat and went out in the water and they sat along the edge of the shore. And he's teaching them. Verse 2 says, And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine. Now the word doctrine sounds very religious, but it just means teaching. That's all it means. It's basically a set of teachings. So doctrine. Verse 3, he tells them a parable. Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. In other words, a farmer is going to sow some seed into the ground. Verse 4, And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, meaning some seed fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. I mean, it was just laying there on the ground, so the birds got it. Verse 5, Some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. And when the sun was up, it was scorched because it had no root. It withered away. Verse 7, And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And the other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear let him hear. Now I want you to think about what he said there. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Now they all had physical ears on the side of their head. That wasn't the issue. The point was they listened closely. They listened intently and they mixed faith with what they heard. Remember what the Bible said about the children of Israel? It says they, they did not profit, the word of God did not profit them not being mixed in with faith in them that heard it. They didn't mix faith with what they heard. They didn't listen intently. See, Romans 10, 17, I always think about this, this verse of Scripture. Very powerful, important verse of Scripture. Romans 10, 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I had somebody ask me one time, Why? Why did they phrase it that way? And I never thought about it. You know, you read scripture and you read it, you read it, you're so familiar with it your whole life. You, you know, you hear the same scripture and so you never really think about it. And so I, I, I asked the question back, what do you mean? What, what are you saying? And they said this, they said, what is it about the way they said that? that I feel like I'm missing something. And so I, I went back and I reread it and I said, well, let me look at it. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, if you look at it just on the surface, it almost sounds like the, the ability to hear with your ear comes because of the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Faith comes by hearing and, and hearing by the word of God. I mean, you know, there's something there that we're not seeing. So I told them, I said, well, let me, let me do some study. Let me check it out. So I went to my Strong's Concordance. I looked up the word hearing, which was repeated twice, hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so I looked at that word, and it's a Greek word, A-K-O-E, is how it's transliterated, a koe, and it means more than the mere sense of hearing. It implies hearing and receiving the teaching. So in other words, these people that were sitting on the side of the sea here while he was out in the boat, they were all hearing the words he was speaking. And they could have been talking amongst themselves. They could have been not paying attention. They could have been drawing in the sand and building a sea castle. Oh, sea castle. A sand castle by the sea there. Who knows? But there were some that sat out there intently listening and receiving. That's why Jesus said, let he that has ears to hear, let him hear. If you got not the ears on the outside, the physical ears, but you got spiritual ears to hear, if you're mixing faith with it, if you're hearing and receiving the teaching, those are the ones he's talking to. See what I'm saying? 
So faith comes by more than the mere sense of hearing. It comes by hearing and receiving the teaching. And I like what I've heard other people say about this. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the Word of God, not having heard the Word of God. I, I have heard the Word of God my whole life. I grew up in church. I went to Sunday school. We had Bible drills where we would, who was the first one to find the scripture in the Bible, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I've been around the Bible my whole life, literally my whole life. And I've studied it intently. I mean, I got a doctorate in theology. I've studied the Word of God intently. But nevertheless, when you hear the Word of God and you get into the Word, no matter how many times you've heard it, something new will come out of it. Why? Because it's alive. It's a living thing. The Word of God is not just paper with ink on it. That's not really what the Word of God is. This Bible that I'm holding in my hand, that's not the Bible in and of itself. This is just a copy. It is paper and it is ink with leather and some shiny gold <laughs> on the edges. But that's all, it's, it's just a book in that sense. But within that book is the Word of God, which lives and abides. Woo, hallelujah. So the Word of God is what we're studying. God's Word breathed out of His own mouth. And if you hear it that way, and you receive it that way, and you mix your faith with it, it will change your life. Now, let's go back to Mark 4. And what I want to read here is uh, what happened after Jesus got along with his disciples. Check this out. Verse 10. When he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve, in other words, kind of the core group, you had the twelve disciples and then the others that were very close into the ministry there, asked him of the parable. So they asked him, what does this mean? What's this parable about? They'd heard it, but they wanted to know more. See, they had ears that were spiritual ears. They knew there was more to it than just a story. And he said unto them, this is verse 11, he said unto them, unto you it is given. Who? Just the fact that they were the twelve, just the fact they were sitting there with him, uh, you know, privately after the whole crowd had left. No, those who were inquiring, those who were pursuing spiritual things, those that were hungry for the word of God, unto you, so I'm talking to you, because you're watching this netcast, you're pursuing the things of God. You're hearing more than, with more than the mere sense of hearing, you're hearing to receive from the teaching, all right? Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Well, let, me, let me put this to you. If it's a mystery, that means not everybody knows it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a mystery, right? So there's a mystery here of the kingdom of God, and unto them that are without, or in other words, outside of this group, outside of the people who are listening with more than a mere sense of hearing, outside of this group there that are not receiving the teaching, okay? Those that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sin should be forgiven them. And you might say, now wait a minute, it sounds like Jesus is saying he doesn't want them to get it. No, that's not the intent. The intent is to tell folks that you've got to do more than just hear it with your ears on the side of your head. You've got to hear it to receive and believe and receive from the teaching. Okay? So he says, in verse 13, He said unto them, Know you not this parable, or don't you understand what this parable means? How then will you know all parables? Now I want you to think about this, what he's saying. If you understand what I'm telling you in this parable, if you get the principles that I'm sharing with you in this parable, in this message, you'll be able to understand all parables. You'll be able to understand the kingdom of God. You will understand the principle by which the kingdom of God operates. Wow.
That's important. That's a Selah moment. We're going to stop and think about that a minute. How the kingdom of God operates is in this parable. So let's read it now. Jesus gives the explanation of the parable beginning in verse 14. The sower soweth the word. Ooh, stop right there. Hold the presses. <laughs> the key to this whole parable, the key to this whole teaching, which is the key to the whole kingdom of God, is to understand that the seed that the sower is sowing is the word of God. Now, I recently taught a message that's on the radio right now, on the radio program, uh, which is the Word of Faith broadcast that airs on WFR uh, every Monday through Friday at 1130 Eastern Time in the morning. And I encourage you to listen to that. You can also go on our website, www.wofm.org, click on Messages by Dr. Bill, and there's a message, it's the one at the very top right now, that says, the rhema contains the power. I'd encourage you to listen to that message. The rhema of God is God's spoken word out of his own mouth, and that word contains within it the power to cause that word to come to pass in your life. Wow. Powerful, powerful information in that message. So I'd encourage you to check that out. But look at what he says here. The sower sows the word. The word is the seed, and the word is the seed that contains the power within itself to cause itself to come to pass. Mm-mm-mm. Powerful, powerful stuff. If you have a need in your life, and you want to know how the kingdom of God operates to meet that need, the answer is in this parable. That's what you got to understand. That's why you need to perk up your ears and listen. The sower sows the seed of the word. Verse 15. These are they by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard, notice they all heard. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. They heard the word. Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Look at that phrase. The word is the seed. The word that is sown in their heart. The heart is the ground. The word is the seed. Hearing is how it is sown. I want you to get that. The heart is the ground. The word is the seed, and the method by which the seed is sown is hearing with more than the mere sense of hearing, but hearing and receiving the teaching. Okay? These are they by the wayside where the word is sown. When they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. These are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who when they've heard the word, again, they heard the word, same opportunity, immediately receive it with gladness, but they have no root in themselves. They don't let the word develop root in their spirit. So they endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction, that's the Greek word thalipsis, which means pressure, when pressure comes or persecution arises for the word's sake. Notice persecution arises for the word's sake. It doesn't arise just because it's you personally. It arises because of the word of God in your life. Immediately, they are offended. Let me tell you, offense will stop the operation of the Word of God. You should just, you should get hard shelled when it comes to offense. Don't be, allow yourself to become offended. The Bible says we take offense. Don't take it. Just refuse to receive offense. Well, yeah, but Dr. Bill, they offended me. Well, don't take it. Just refuse it. Amen. Meditate on that. It'll, it'll help you. These are they by which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. Notice again, they heard the word. And the cares of this world. Greek word maremna, care, anxiety. Cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lusts of other things, entering in, choke the word, 
and it, the word, which contains within it the power to cause itself to come to pass, becomes unfruitful. Oh my goodness, the word of God becomes unfruitful? Yeah, if you allow it in, these cares and anxieties and issues, they'll choke out the word, just like a weed will choke out the good plants. That's what we're talking about. Verse 20, and these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word. See, there they go. They all heard the word. They hear the word, but they receive it. They bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixtyfold, and some a hundredfold. He said to them, as a candle be brought in, under a... Uh, to be put under a bushel or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick. For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither is anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man has ears to hear, let him hear. Verse 24, And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you the hear shall more be given. He that hath to him shall be given. He that hath not from him shall be taken, even that which he hath. Now here's what I want to get to, verse 26. He said, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground. Now, let me just stop right there. We, uh, we can go further, but we're out of, almost out of time. So is the kingdom of God. The whole kingdom of God operates on this principle of seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest. We're going to get into this again next week. We're out of time for right now. I want you to write me here at Word of Faith Ministries. Our address is Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina, the zip code 27262. Also, you can write me in my email address. My email address is drbill, D-R-B-I-L-L, at W-O-F-M dot O-R-G. Join us next time on the netcast. Remember until then to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.